What's up, beautiful coding family? It's me, your girl, Victoria Chop. I'm back here with another fabulous screen share for you guys. Um, we're going to do another evaluation and management note because I know that this is going to help you guys to become elite medical coders. So that's why I'm taking out my time to help you guys become like me, honey, so you can go out and make you some great money, okay? Remember, you know, once you become an asset and you learn all of these things, uh, you will be very valuable as a coder, okay? And one thing, you know, they can never take away what you know, okay? I want you to always understand that. They cannot take away what you know, baby. They can't take away what I know. They can say what they want, but they can't take away what I know because I know my ish, okay? So let me go ahead and start the screen share with you guys tonight. I hope y'all are having like the most fabulous Sunday ever. I mean, I really mean that. I hope you're having a very fabulous Sunday. There I am. Hey, y'all see me? Y'all see me? And yes, I do look very fabulous tonight, honey. I do, don't I? I got my little custom-made shirt on, and I'm just looking cute. But let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So again, I'm always going to link these notes in the description box. So check down there in the description box, okay? The note will be there for you. Um, if you guys want to practice e &M outside of this video, go to the website, Empty Samples. I'm going to link that also in the, in the description box uh, so you guys can go back and pull up other notes. And you're going to use this calculator from the Boz Hill. Um, that's E-M-C-A-L-C.A-D-V-I-Z-E-Health.com. Okay, it's available for everyone. It's not just made for me. You can go actually go to this website, find this calculator and go to empty samples and pull you some notes. And that's how you can learn how to start doing uh, these notes. Okay, so let's go ahead. Um, let me fix my little keyboard, y'all, and get right into this because I try to cut these things as much as I can. <coughs> Sorry, you guys. Okay, let's get right into it. Okay, this is a CAD six-month follow-up, so I'm going to assume this is a primary care note, okay? So right here under the chief complaint, I'm going to put CAD, stands for coronary artery disease, okay? I always got to have a chief complaint. If you don't have a chief complaint, why are they there? They don't have a reason to be there without a chief complaint, you guys, okay? And so the service type here, I'm going to just put established patient. I'm going to click that. And for the purpose of these videos, remember what I said, uh, anything, any date of service, January 1st, 2021 or after, the new and established patients go by medical decision making only. This format that I'm teaching you here is history, exam, and medical decision making. It's a difference, okay? But for the purpose of not confusing you, we're just going to do the old way first because the old way is still going to be relevant to you because for emergency room visits, consults, or anything like that, you still have to use this exact same format. So understand that, okay? So let's go ahead and get this going here. So we already know what the chief complaint is. Now, let's go ahead and read the H HPI. Sometimes, you guys, they don't really uh, spell out to you, like, this is HPI, this is past medical history. You just got to kind of know these things. And on this particular note, it doesn't really say HPI. But let's go ahead and read the description here and see what's going on, okay? It says he's a 67-year-old man who suffers from chronic anxiety and coronary artery, artery disease and DJD. He has been having some chest pains, but overall, he does not sound too concerning. He does know some more shortness of breath than usual. He has had no palpitations or lightheadedness, no problems with edema, okay? So that says that's the description, okay? Then if you go down to the reason for the visit, it says six-month follow-up visit for CAD. Then you have another little paragraph under that. So the little paragraph under that that starts out, he is a 67-year-old man who suffers from chronic anxiety and coronary artery disease. Those three paragraphs right there, that's the HPI. That description, I don't know what this company is doing, uh, but I wouldn't even pay no attention to that. I would just go right on down there and, and look at those three little paragraphs and pick out my HPI element. So he's a 67-year-old man who suffers from chronic anxiety and coronary artery disease and DJD. He has been having a lot of pain in his back, okay? That's the location, so we can go ahead and do a click for that, okay? He's been having a lot of pain in his back and pain in his left knee, okay? So he's also having left knee pain, so I'm going to click associated signs and symptoms for that, all right? Um, he also is having some trouble getting 
his nerves under control. He is having some stomach pain and occasional nausea, okay? Occasional nausea would be timing to me, occasional nausea. His teeth are bad and needs to be pulled, okay? He has been having some chest pains, but overall, he does not sound too concerning. He has been having some chest pain, chest pain is location, but overall does not sound too concerning. He does know some more shortness of breath than usual. Um, more than usual to me, that's severity. So he's having more shortness of breath than usual. I'm gonna check severity for that. Um, he has had no palpitations or lightheadedness, no problems with edema, okay? So remember, you know, sometimes in the HPI, you'll find review, review of system elements. So with those two lines there, um, no problems with edema, I'm gonna use that for my review of system cardiovascular. And um, what else does it say? He has had no palpitations or lightheadedness. No palpitations, I'm gonna use that for cardiovascular review system. Okay, oh, well, both of those are cardiovascular, okay. So I'm just trying to see. No lightheaded, low lightheadedness, I could use that for neuro. I would use neuro for that. No lightheadedness, okay. So just me personally, once I get four of HPI elements here, I don't go on trying to find other things, okay. Because if I get four HPI elements, I've been doing this long enough that I know that that's going to get me a nice code if my exam and my medical decision making are enough. So after four, I just tune out because it's a waste of my time and time is money. Okay. So let's just go ahead and down here to the next thing where it says medications. Medications, anytime they talk about medications, it's a part of your past family and social history. Uh, medications that he's currently on. Uh, we could check that right here where it says current medications, okay? So I'm going to check that. And we see that he's on Lipitor, Metaprolol, Plavix, uh, Aspirin, Xanax, you know. And I can tell by just looking at this note, once you become a seasoned medical coder, you'll be able to understand, like, when you see certain drugs, because you see the drugs repetitively, repetitively um, you will know what's going on with the patient just by the drugs. So Lipitor, I know that's something to do with cholesterol, Lipitor, um, Plavix, there's something wrong with the heart, Xanax, anxiety, like I, uh, I recognize these things, okay? So it's just because once you become very seasoned, uh, you'll know how to do this. Okay, on to the next page, it says the review system is otherwise unremarkable, okay? And so let me go around here to my review system. I'm going to check all others reviewed and negative, okay? So you can check that box, but only if you have two review systems documented. You have to have two documented in order to, to, to check this all others are reviewed and negative, okay? So I have that, so I'm going to go ahead and check that, okay? So next, I'm going to move on to my exam, okay? And you know what? One day, I'm actually going to show you guys how to do 1997, even though I know I don't like 1997 exam guidelines, but because I'm trying to teach y'all, I'm really trying to teach y'all something on this channel, I'm going to show y'all how to do it because, you know, some facilities that you go to, they don't want you to use 1995. I have, I have facilities that I contract for who don't want 1995 guidelines where we have to use 1997 where it's mandatory. So, yes, some places do say it's mandatory that you do this. You know, you can't do 95. So I think you guys need to see that. It's just the only difference in the two is that the 1997 guidelines are bulleted, okay? And you'll see once we get into that, that it's going to take you longer to fill out your exam, okay? Which is going to just, just going to make your, your day more drawn out, right? That's why people don't like them because, you know, you have to read so much into the exam and check, 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 okay? So you'll, you'll get that once I show you. But for the purpose of this stuff, we're just going to do our 1995 basic little exam, okay? I'm going to click that. We're not going to do uh, body areas because, to me, I don't even know why they're, why they're there. I, I never use body areas. The only time I may use body areas if I'm at a site that says use 1995 and I'm coding like dermatology, okay? This not, body areas is good for dermatology because, you know, the skin is an organ by itself, right? So if you're going to a dermatologist, he might check the, the skin of the head, the skin of the neck, the skin of the back, blah, 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 okay? And so that's the only way 
the only reason why I would ever use body areas is if I was cold in dermatology and it would, and, and they told me to use 1995 exam. Other than that, I'm going straight organ systems, okay? So let me just go ahead and let's look at the uh, physical examination. So right here, you have blood pressure, weight, and um, you have all the vitals documented. So I'm gonna go ahead and check constitutional for that because you have those things documented. You have um, no carotid, brute, cardiac, regular rate and rhythm. I'm gonna go ahead and check um, cardiovascular for that. Then you have, what else do we have here? You have lungs are clear. We're gonna check respiratory for that. You have, um, what else do we have? Abdomen, mildly tender throughout the epigastrum. And I'm gonna check um, GI for that, gastrointestinal. And extremities, no edema. Extremities, no edema is the cardiovascular element, regardless if they check it, it's on the, on the extremities or not. It's still cardiovascular, so it's nothing I can do with that. And so let me just go through it one more time to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, because I love to get a detailed exam because I know it's going to make me have a higher code. But you can only get a detailed exam if you have five um, five organ systems examined. Okay. And right now I only have four. Boo. Okay. So let's just read through it one more time. The goal is to get the highest code that you could get. Um, but <clears throat> you have to have everything that you need to back it up. Okay. So let's just make sure I don't have anything else. And it looks like that's going to be it for the um, for the organ system. So I can't check this box. You know, you hear me saying this repeatedly, repeated every week. I tell you guys, you have to have five to seven if you're going to check this detailed exam box. We don't have that, so we have to just move on, okay? And so I'm going to go now to my medical decision making. All right. So what do we have here? <sighs> Let's see. We have actually a lot of diagnoses on this note. We have CAD, coronary artery disease. We have dyspnea, knee pain, dyslipidemia, panic attacks, abdominal pain, um, and prevention. I do not think it needs to be on plavix. Okay. So we have several things going on here. And two of them, Three of them actually I see are chronic disorders. So you have the CAD and you have the um, dyslipidemia and the panic attacks. I would consider all of those chronic. So three of them I know are chronics. Okay. I see, listen. This is what I'm saying. Like I don't, I don't got myself mixed up a little bit because I'm thinking, oh, they're chronic. That's how you come up with the new code, okay, on the medical decision making part. But this, this don't really have anything to do with chronic. It has something to do with the established improvement problem, the established worsening problem, the new problem. Um, no additional workup on the new problem. Additional workup. So that's really that's the that's a big difference in the new way and the old way that the new way will actually, you know, it actually focuses on, is this a chronic disorder, you know, and this does it, okay? So anyway, we know that the CAD, it doesn't look like that's, looks like that's established, saying the spenia is, I think that's worsening from the HPI. I think I've seen him say, he said that was kind of worsening. Let's see here. I'm just going to go back and read, okay? Yes, he does note some more shortness of breath than usual, okay? So I would be willing to say that, the, that this, the spenia was worsening because he says so. You can't check it unless he says so. So that's one of the problems that's worsening is, is the, the spenia, okay? And the rest of these things, coronary artery disease, knee pain, doesn't say that any of the rest of these things are worsening. So you can't assume. So I would say that's five other problems, the CAD, the knee pain, the dyslipidemia, the panic attacks, and the abdominal pain. I would just say they were established same, improving, um, because I can't just assume that they're worsening if the provider doesn't state that they are. 
okay? And he doesn't state that they are. So I can't assume that they are. Now on the Vespedia, he actually said that it was worsening. It's more than usual. So I could assume that. The other stuff I can't assume, okay? So the amount of complexity in data, let's see what was done. Review and order of clinical lab tests, review and order of x-rays, review and order of other tests, discussion of tests were performing in D, independent review of image tracing or specimen, decision to obtain records and or other history from someone other than the patient, and review and summarization of old records, obtain history from someone other than the patient, discuss case with other MD. So you're going to always get this information from the impression and plan to see what's going on. So he is referring the patient out. He is discontinuing some meds. Is this ordering something? Let's see. Today. Let's see. Okay. What? The spania seems to be due to his weight and disability from his knee. His echocardiogram shows no systolic or diastolic function. It looks like he did might have did a EKG. It looks like he did. Because it says EKG sinus rhythm left axis deviation, otherwise unremarkable. So let's see here. Review the order of other tests, review the order of clinical. Yeah, I'll just count that down there. I'm not going to count that right there. So sometimes. You're not going to always check every single box. If it doesn't apply, you're not going to check it. So I'm not going to check any of this. Yeah. I'm just reading through y'all. Okay. So I'm not going to check any of those right there. I'm just going to skip that because I can't double dip. I do see some things that I can check. But uh, I would rather use them down here than up there, okay? So I'm going to skip that because I don't really see anything that I can do, okay? And so right here, when you go down to your wrist, you know, it's either going to be minimal, low, moderate, or high. So in this case, I'm going to say that it is a moderate risk because you have two or more stable chronic illnesses with the uh, CAD and the dyslipidemia, okay? And so... Here, diagnostic procedures that they are ordering. He ordered an EKG because he read it. Okay, so I'm going to check that. And um, let's see here. He didn't do any of that. So just go through each one of these categories and see if whatever is here is in this note. Like, did, did he order any of these diagnostic procedures? Okay, and if it's not, then it's nothing that you can check, okay? But you can only check like one of these categories. So he didn't do any of these things, okay? Nothing in the high category, nothing in the moderate category, nothing in the low category that I can see, but he did order the EKG because it's red on the note, okay? So that's why I'm going to check that. And um, he's ordering lab tests too and reading them because he says the person has excellent numbers today with his cholesterol so i would actually check that okay or you know what just so i can have a check up there <laughs> i'm going to use the fact that he ordered um a panel for his dyslipidemia and that he has excellent numbers i'm going to check this right here review and order a clinical lab test because he had to order a lipid panel in order to say that he had excellent numbers. So just so I'll have a check in that spot, I'm gonna do it, okay? And so here, again, the management options, when you look at your management options, you can only check one, so you just have to go through the categories and see, you know, which one applies. In this situation, you know, he's, he's continuing his prescription drug management, so I'm gonna check this. Okay, so I now have all my categories check, 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 check. And now I'm gonna re I'm ready to calculate my code because this does not we can't check time because time is not dominating this visit. So time doesn't have anything to do with this EM. All right. So now I'm gonna get ready to calculate and see what we get. 
99214. Yay! I love 99214s. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and break this down. We have a detailed history and expanded problem focus exam and a moderate medical decision making. So this was actually a pretty good note. I love it when I can get a four. Okay. I love fours. Okay. Because you're, what you should be doing is trying to get the highest code that you could possibly get for the provider. Okay. That is your job to extract the clinical documentation. And if you do a good job at it, the higher the code will be. Okay. But you want to make sure that you're being compliant. You're not being fraudulent. You're not making up things. Right. So just make sure that what is documented in the note, like you can justify that on your calculator. Okay. So that's how you can come up with your evaluation and management code. Okay. So I'm going to close that out. And let's just quickly talk about these diagnosis codes, okay? I'm gonna try to do this quick because I've probably been on here. My goal was only 20 minutes and I'm probably over that right now. But um, let's see what the what the ICD-10 codes will be for this. So you have CAD, all right? So look up uh, disease coronary artery, all right? Go on your ICD-10 book, look up disease coronary artery. Okay, it says when you do that, it says C disease, heart, ischemic, atherosclerotic, atherosclerotic. Okay, so look that up. So sometimes you'll have to go to another place. Okay, so once you look that up in your book, and I'm looking down, I already know what this code is anyway. I'm just doing this for y'all. It's going to be I 2510. Okay. So I-25-T is the code for coronary artery disease. Also, we know that this patient has uh, a stint. He has had a stint in his LAD and his obtuse marginal, fairly stable. A stint is going to be Z95.5. Uh, Z95.5 is a stint. If this person had had a cabbage, um, a bypass graft, it would be Z95.1, okay? And I'm not even looking at my book because I don't have to. Okay, so dyspedia, okay, when you look up dyspedia in your book, because that's number two, dyspedia is R0600. I'm not even looking in my book, but um, let me just make sure I'm telling you right. R0600 should be the code for dyspedia. So let's look at it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Becky. R0600. Yep. That's the spinia unspecified. Okay. And so number three, we have knee pain. And he's going to refer this person to orthopedics. Okay. So knee pain is um M25569. Knee pain unspecified. But let's go back to the HPI and make sure that he does not give more specificity. Because if he gives more specificity in his HPI, you'll have to go with that code. Okay. So that's the only time that you will not, you know. Because you're, you're supposed to code what you see. That's that's why how coders get in trouble because they don't code what they see. So yes, you're supposed to code what you see. But when it comes down to specificity, like if it's right or left, you need to look for those things. And you'll normally find them in the HPI. So just go through the HPI quickly and see if he says what location the knee pain is in. And right here he does. He says he's been having a lot of pain in his back and pain in his left knee. Okay, so you're not going to code the unspecified code when the HPI is telling you it's left knee. All right, so let's look up, let's let's find the code for left knee pain. All right, so look in your book, in your ICD 10 book, and find the code for left knee pain. You can't use the unspecified code because it's not unspecified. The provider is telling you what the location is. Okay, so let me just look at this real quick, guys. Left knee pain is M25562. M25562 is left knee pain, okay? Number four, he has dyslipidemia. Uh, without looking at my book, dyslipidemia is E78.5. That's dyslipidemia, okay? He has panic attacks and anxiety, okay? Let's look up with the code for panic attacks and, and anxiety. I think it's F410. I could be wrong. Let's see. Attacks. 
the text. Let's see here. Oh, tax panic is F41 O. Okay. Now I'm going to flip to the back of my book. Make sure that it's not a combination code with that anxiety. So that's going to be F41 O. But I will also code F41.9 for the anxiety. Okay. And I always check your edits because it might tell you that you know those two codes are excluded from each other. But I'm going to code it. Okay. And this is in this instance. Okay. And number six is going to be abdominal pain. Asked to restart his amazoprol. And I'm also giving him um also going to reduce his aspirin to 81 milligrams. So again, go on your HPI and see if the abdominal pain is like left upper quadrant, right upper quadrant, epigastric. See if you can find a specific location. And um, in this case, in the HPI, there's nothing, there's crickets. So it's no nothing giving additional details about this uh, abdominal pain. So uh, it will be RTN.9. Let me make sure that's right. And I've been doing this for so long and that's how why I don't have to use books and why I'm extremely quick and why I can make a lot of money because I, I don't even have to do all of this. Okay. So you will be you will you will, you will become like this too once you've been in the game so long. Let's see. RT9. RT9. Let's make sure. Yep, that's unspecified abdominal pain. So again, it's about specificity. So Yes, you need the code, what you see, but in the cases where it could be a specific area, if it could be right, it could be left, you know, you want to go up in the HPI because that's where the provider is telling the tale of the, of the disorder, the disease, the symptom, and you want to see if you can actually find that location, okay? And so in this case, it, it is none, all right? And so also the patient is taking aspirin. Uh, so that's Z, I think it's Z7982, but let me flip to the back of my book. Okay, and when you get on a job too, you're gonna have your encoder that is going to help you. Well, you won't have to be flipping through books, you know. So that's gonna actually help you too. So let me just make sure that I told you guys the right code for aspirin, and then I'm gonna close this out. If I bet y'all been, I went beyond 20 minutes, which I was not trying to do, but I'm trying to teach y'all this stuff because. I don't know if you're going to get this anywhere. This is so much free drip. I'm just saying. So, okay. Yep. Z7982 is long term use of aspirin. Okay. So, those are your ICD 10 codes. Let me just read them off to you real quick and we're going to shut this one down. I2510 for the CAD, Z95.5 for the stent, uh, M25562 for the, for the left knee pain, R0600 for the, for the dyspnea. E78.5 for hyperlipidemia, F41.0 for panic attacks, F41.9 for anxiety, R109 for abdominal pain, and Z79.82 for the aspirin. Okay. And so that's going to do it, you guys. We did it. We coded our EM. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen share right now and see if I can. There I am. There you are. Okay, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this one down. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. I'm going to try to do this, attempt to do this every week because this is very important and you will be needing this. So, you know, when you get on the job, you won't be like um, looking around like, oh my God, I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. I'm telling you what to do. This is what you will be doing. This is the E&M calculator. So this is a job skill that I am teaching you, okay? So anyway, I hope you guys have a very blessed and amazing night. And until next week, my friends, bye. Let's see if I can get this off.